It's Pride Month! And I want to talk about romance in games. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, everything in between, and Nina. I don't wear my glasses, but in the next scene, I will. <laughs> but before I get into the video, feel free to follow me on my social media, on Instagram and Twitter, at Commander Nikki, just like my channel name. You know the drill. And now let's get into the video. So let's talk about romance and romance options in general first and then I will go into specific details and I should probably maybe actually give out a proper spoiler warning for some stuff but we'll get to that later. So uh, romance and games. I don't need it. It's cool when it's there. And when it's necessary, like when it feels like it should be there or when it adds to a story in a specific way or when it's well written in general and not just some thing users slap on the story because I don't know what up. Uh, you know, so it's cool when it's there, it's cool when it's not. Not every game needs romance, but if it's there, it's cool, I'm fine with it, and especially when I can choose to be queer. In Mass Effect, I still prefer a girl's romance for my fanship, but that's another story, and I should probably get to that too later, so. Stay tuned for the next segment. Hmm. Attention, attention, here comes your spoiler warning. If you haven't played the games I'm going to mention and you don't want to be spoiled, even though I'm just talking about the romans in them, which are sometimes spoilers, sometimes not, uh, definitely go check them out first. Well, <laughs> some of them. Uh, and then come back to this video if you like. So be aware of spoilers of the romances for the following games. Mass Effect and Mass Effect Andromeda. The David Cage games, all Life is Strange games, Uncharted, Wolfenstein, The Last of Us, Days Gone, Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. Fallout 4, Skyrim, Stardew Valley, Oxen Free, and The Outer Worlds. So, those games are what I'm gonna focus on, and yes, yeah, so that's the spoiler warning. Let's continue. So, let's start with Mass Effect. And before I start, I wanna be honest, uh, I don't wanna get into too much detail of each specific romance because that's a topic for another video so stay tuned for that and yeah so Mass Effect I love the game and it's a bummer that the male romance option for a male shepherd only gets available in the third game like that's bad and also the only exclusively available for a femship romance with another woman is also only available in the third game and the romances are okay they are nice I like them but Compared to the others with just having one game to have it be developed uh, It's not great. Let's be real here and Then there's cat romances like Tally and Jack and especially Jack being cut out for being available for a fam shop That's bad because she explicitly mentions being bisexual and that's 
Why would you cut that if it's if if a line like that is in the text of the game? It, it's not hidden in any files. That uh, the Romans w is would have been available. That's hidden in the code somewhere. But Jack definitely mentions having girlfriends before. So. Why can't the femshap romance her? It's, it's a little upsetting and uh, I get that many people w and want everyone in Mass Effect to be bi so they can romance whoever they want but I'm okay with straight people. I really am! Uh, <laughs> That came off wrong, but the thing is, sure, a romance with Miranda for my fanship would be cool, but I'm okay with it being only for male shepherds. So, yeah, I would love for male shepherd to be able to romance Garrus. From bromance to romance, why the heck not? But it's okay to have only a femship be able to romance Garrus. At least we've got Mass Effect Andromeda with finally a female romanceable Turian squad mate for both riders. That's amazing. Again, we still have the Asawi squad mate who's romance will by both and sure with only one game of Andromeda being available uh, the romances aren't that big either same with the exclusively gay romances for either a male or female shepherd they are not so great no not they, they okay but they left a few wishes open and even in Andromeda the exclusively gay and lesbian romance are cute and fine but compared to the squad mate romances they are mediocre at best and that's sad. So that's it about Mass Effect and now let's move to the next game and example. Wait, 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 no. Let's not move to the next game yet. I forgot to mention Caden. Uh, Caden is great. And finally got romanceable for a male chat in the third game. I'm a tiny bit upset Ashley didn't get the same treatment, but who needs a space racist as a girlfriend? Let's be real here. Uh, I have left her in Wormaya way too often to f even figure out if she at least somewhat turns around and gets more accepting of aliens. I should look that up or try in another playthrough. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's cool. Like, and I get, and I think it's especially kind of cool that Caden is it's sad and yes you should have been romanceable throughout the whole trilogy but here it is some people only figure out later in life that they are not straight and I think that's kind of something cool that should be represented too and like just imagine like Caden getting to know Dude Shepherd and working with him and then seeing him die alone in space and then meeting him again on Horizon being with Cerberus of all people and then they meet again back on the Normandy and something has changed. And then Caden gets beaten up within 
an inch of death and he is alone in that hospital and he can think for a while and maybe that's the moment when he realizes he likes Shepard more than just a colleague or a friend he wants to be with him and it took him that much time and this close to death experience to, to realize that and that's something I can think about to argue that it's actually okay for Caden to be Roman romanceable so late in the trilogy for a male chap. So think about it. I've thought about it and I think it's cool, so now let's move to the next topic. Let's talk about Life is Strange real quick, but not for too long because that again is reserved for a special video. So Life is Strange gives you the option in two of the three so far, four, but we are not counting Captain Spirit for this one. And Life is Strange gives you in two of the three out games the option to choose between two characters, two romance, a guy and a girl. And I want to be honest, the romances with the guy always kind of suck. And that's not okay. <laughs> and the romances with the girls are, they, they feel more developed. And in Before the Storm you only have the option to either romance the girl or not romance the girl. But it's clear that the romance should be the given path considering the events of Life is Strange in itself. And yeah, so <laughs> that's it for Life is Strange. Um, I know I should keep it longer but I wanna move to the next game and keep my whole thoughts on the romances in Life is Strange and especially the stuff about the man in Life is Strange. Yes, I just dropped what kind of video I want to do soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, now there's no way around it, except if I cut this part out. And yes, so let's move on to the next game. Uh, so David Cage does not make games for facts. That's a quote and I feel gross for saying the F slur. And the romances in those games aren't great either. And even though the games have many flaws and the person who is behind it is a douchebag, um, I still want to think about think about them and talk about them and uh, I appreciate the games even though they have problems and I just like choice based games and the David Cage games if you look past the flaws are pretty great ones. So let's get started with Heavy Rain. <laughs> the romance is weird and sure people need comfort but no, just just fucking no. Like make jokes about the bad and anim kissing animation that just moves, that, that just looks like fish trying to get to, to live on land. Look past that. Just look at the situation it's in itself. The guy is looking for his son who is about to drown and he hooks up with that lady. <laughs> Sorry for that sound. <laughs> I'm not gonna do talk about this again. Beyond Your Souls? 
was pretty okay-ish. I mean, it's got several endings and... Uh, let's be real, the romance is with the guys aren't that great. There isn't any romance with women either, because again, haha, <laughs> David Cage doesn't make games for people like me. Oh, and let's talk about Detroit Become Human, the latest masterpiece. The only queer characters are two lesbian sex robots. Do with that information what you want. And let's talk about the romance options. It's just one. For Marcus, the... Uh, the probably main protagonist of the three. I don't like that you can't romance Simon. They have a great dynamic, especially if you pick the peaceful route of the android liberation. That was definitely a wrong word to use. But the parallels are just too on the nose, let's be real here. And I feel like romancing North doesn't even make sense if you go on the peaceful path. Like, she hates humans. Which I understand. But she hates humans. It doesn't make sense that you can romance North as Marcus if you go on a peaceful path. It, if you go on a war path, that would make more sense, and that's the kind of problem I have with that. No. Just no. And let's just stop talking about David Cage games. Let's move on to the next topic. Scripted romance. Like, you don't ha choose, it's just there and in the game right in front of you. I think the topic of scripted romances is a little complicated because it begs a question to ask is it necessary? And for the three examples I have, I think they're not really necessary but they do have their place and I think that's okay and I think that is what makes those romance side plots in a story okay. So first of all we have Uncharted and the romance between Nathan Drake and Eleanor Fisher. And it slowly develops over all four games until they're finally mar married and even have a kid together and I think that's beautiful and especially with Eleanor not being a damsel in distress or just arm candy or the trope of the sexy lamp. It's great. Eleanor can handle herself and she's a great counterpart to Nate and I think that's beautiful and if a romance in a game is like that I have nothing against it <laughs> even if it's straight. I'm gonna get to that later. That sounded really negative. And next up is Wolfenstein, the 3D universe. And we have BJ Blazkowicz and his wife, girlfriend. <laughs> and she, in the beginning of the second game, was it the second game? Or the first? I think it was the first or the second. Oh my god, I need to replay the games. <laughs> um, but she nurses him while he is wheelchair bound and stuff. And then 
over the story they fall in love and I think it's kind of beautiful and I think besides wanting to get his homeland back from the bad guys I'm not gonna say that one word, I'm not sure how YouTube likes it. I mean, I don't monetize my videos, but um, let's just not say that certain word. You know, the bad guys in Wolfenstein. And sure, he, he wants to take his homeland back, but having that woman at his side definitely helps him knowing what he's fighting for. And I think that's amazing and that romance too has its part in the story of the games and that's that's okay. And now let's talk about The Last of Us. Queer representation in a triple A title. The main character. And the best part is Ellie's queerness has nothing to do with the game. Nothing. Sure, she, she's got a girlfriend in the second game and that's amazing. They kiss, <laughs> that's amazing. They live together on a farm. Well, for some time at least. <laughs> but it's great and the game is not about her queerness. Her queerness is just a part of the game that you can't deny. And that's great and I think we need more stuff like this. And yes, some people were screaming like, oh my god, why does everything has to be queer? And to which I say, hey, not everything has to be straight either. And yet here we are. Two of my three examples of scripted romances in games are straight. And so are many, many, many other romances in games, movies, shows. Sure, it's getting better, but what do we get? One character per five shows that maybe gets a romance? And maybe if you're lucky, it's good representation. And uh, it's sad that there should be more representation. So much so that it isn't even called representation anymore. That it's just there. Like, like I am here. Like many other people just exist and Having a show or game or a movie not have any queer characters in it. Clearly visible. Show, I mean, besides, I mean, I'm, most of the time I dress pretty queerly. <laughs> uh, uh, hold on, let's... Like most of the time I wear my rainbow bla bracelet and uh, attached to my keys is a rainbow lanyard. You can see that I'm queer. Sure, some people hide it, some people aren't really visibly queer, but we exist and representation shouldn't be a blink and you miss it moment like Disney often proclaims their first openly gay character in a Disney movie. Fuck that. But yeah, scripted romances are great in games if they fit in. Otherwise, I don't really care if the characters have any romances. Just a quick mention, take GTA for example, there's like some stuff, I'm not gonna get into it because I didn't give a spoiler warning, but 
let's be real, it just wouldn't really fit in there unless it's like really with the character's connection. <laughs> but yeah, enough about the scripted romances in games. Let's move to the next topic. In Germany we have the saying ein bisschen wie schadet nie, which roughly translate to you can't do anything wrong worth being a little bit by. And that brings me to the topic. I want to talk about games in which everyone is by question mark because I feel like they're not really by. They are just into whatever you choose your player character to be. And I feel a little conflicted about that, but I'm also really happy. Like, let me romance whoever I want, please, because some characters are really great and uh, it would be sad if I couldn't recreate myself and more or less have my character date some cool character. Let's take Fallout 4 for example, which has one actually pretty explicit example of the character clearly being somewhat more canonically by. I'm talking about Kate and there is this little thing if you swap out companions um, Kate will make a comment if you swap her with Piper um, I don't know which way around if you have to switch Kate for Piper or Piper for Kate uh, I'm pretty sure it goes into one direction but not into the other but Kate will make a comment be about being open to Polly Amori and she says something along the lines oh I'm sad we can't make it a threesome which is pretty cool like you go Kate uh, I don't remember if Piper says something about that or not but I think that's a pretty neat little easter egg that makes a clear reference to Kate definitely being queer on one level or another. The other characters, they're just into the soul survivor no matter what, which technically would make them pan, I guess. But Maybe it's just easier to code to have the romance options being open to anyone. Same with Skyrim. And there almost everything is possible. You can you can go and ask some old one-eyed beggar that you gave a coin once to marry you. Uh, that's wild. And kind of cool, but it the romances in those games kind of feel empty. They are just like a little bonus, and I could just do well without them. I mean, I love Piper and Kate, and they are like if I replay Fallout 4 my go-to romances that I pick. Same with Farkas if I play a male player character in Skyrim and mostly Aela the Huntress if I play a female player character or I go for romancing that one orc lady in Markath because I think orcs are pretty cool. Or that chief's daughter that I kind of... Do I buy her freedom? 
I think I do. That's a little messed up, but... Hey, you can romance almost anyone in Skyrim and it's wild. It's okay. Now let's talk about Stardew Valley. It's great. I love that, that this small little town is so open. I mean, there's no clear text that mentions uh, any kind of variation of being straight or not being straight like there isn't a comment like there's there's no queer fear there's again i love stardew valley but romance <laughs> while they're a lot better than the romances in skyrim and fallout 4 uh, they still feel kind of empty and that's like I don't mean that in any mean way or something, but it's just how they are. You're nice to the... I mean, is that how romance works? You're nice to a person until they like you? Like, like, like you? <laughs> and, um... But if you as a player character choose to romance or even marry, uh character in a town that is of the same gender as you are there's no mention of it being a queer romance and with that romance it's also that you and the character you choose are the only queer couple in the game which is kind of sad like there's lots of straight couples and i mean w w lots uh, there's like two or three and like everyone in this town is straight except for the bachelors and bachelorettes and they're just open to whatever you choose to be <laughs> and while, yes, it's great that you can romance whoever you want, but it feels kind of empty if it's just like that. Um, it's hard to explain. I hope you understand. And now let's get over the awkwardness and move on to the next topic. And then you have games like and free where you actually don't have a romance at all but you're kind of sort of a wingman and in oxen free for example you um, have the option to talk to Nona and Ren and depending on what dialogue options you choose they will either end up together or they won't. And I think that's pretty... <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that's pretty neat and really cool and something I haven't really seen in games before that. Uh, another great example of being a wingman and having no romance is The Outer Worlds and you, as the captain of the unreliable, you don't have any romance. But you help your crewmate Parati to get with some cute mechanic of another ship. And I think that's pretty neat. Also, Parati is great ace representation, at least from what I've heard. And that's pretty neat. And you have all those kind of missions with her to help her get on a date and prepare for having a date with this mechanic whose name I'm blanking on right now. I should have prepared more but it's it's really cool and actually something I would like to see more of. So being a wingman instead of having your own romance in a game 
That's neat. That's cool. Good stuff. Sometimes there's romance you don't even notice. Because it's really in the background of the game. And especially with Red Dead Redemption 1 and Days Gone. It's kind of amazing how the romance kind of drives the plot, but it's so much in the background that you almost forget about it. Like John Marston is on a quest to hunt down his former gang buddies and the Pinkertons, or like the cops, uh, hold his wife and son captive until he deals with those problems of the past. And the whole game is driven by the fact that he wants to be reunited with his wife and his son to live out the rest of his days with them. And in Days Gone it's pretty much the same except for the fact that Deacon first thinks his wife is dead. Kind of. Like he never really gave up hope and he goes to find her over a long stretch of the game and in the end he actually finds her and gets to live with her. And I think it's, that, that's kind of cool, like you play the game and it's clear that the romance is there but even though it drives the plot it's not the main focus and that's, that's really really cool and in Red Dead Redemption 2 it's almost the same except that Arthur's romance is a thing of the past. He will mention his wife or you can read up in his journal about his wife and I think he had a son who also died and uh, the only romances in Red Dead Redemption 2 are just kinda on the side and it's also mainly just John and his wife, Abigail, and I think that's kinda cool like that those games deal with romance in such a way and I think it should happen more often. Like, I think that's the perfect balance of having a romance in a game and not having it the sole focus, even though it kinda is. Like, you can just look away for a bit and just enjoy the game, if, maybe if you're not into romance. And I think that's cool and pretty unique. I think. Maybe. If it's not unique, comment down below where else I can find a similar story than that. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it for now. <laughs> Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. What do, do you think? Do you like romance in games? Do you have other examples of romances you liked or didn't like? Romance systems in games? Uh, tell me about them. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to follow me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Commander Nikki, just like my channel name. And until I figure out what I can upload next, watch my other stuff. Bye. And don't forget how Pride started.